found in the metaphysical sciences. So what, what has been a development in the last 10 years has been the idea that um, open data and very low levels of data are very important for high-end um, policy research in the social sciences and also for humanities research. And one, one um, example I'm giving is in the post-2015 MDG report, which has a look at uh, um, achieving the Millennium Development Goals. They, they call for a data revolution. And really what they're looking at is um, countries need better quality data, they need, need more detailed data, and they need the data to be more open to actually make policies that are going to work towards these goals. And a lot of countries have been developing social science research data infrastructure to make this happen. Um, and one, one type of uh, infrastructure is the data archives. And um, some of you are representing data archives. So uh, as most people know, there's a network of social science data archives, or as I like to call them now, social science data services, because they do more than just archive data. And I've just given an example here of the European archives, that's actually CESDA. These are the different archives that you get in European countries. There's obviously uh, Japan has an archive, um, and South Africa has an archive, the South African Data Archive, um, which I think Daisy will talk more about during the conference. So these have actually uh, evolved from just places where you could store your data, um, places that are usually government funded, where you could store your data from social science research, um, and and would share the data on request to organizations that are actually doing things like data harmonization, they're giving data user support, um, and, and working with data between, uh, liaison between data users and data producers to improve the quality of national data. I just want to talk a little bit about data first at the University of Cape Town. That's a picture of my university on the hill. So this is our mission statement. I won't read the whole thing. We um, we were looking at our mission statement over the years, and we refined it. And why that's one of the requirements to to achieve the um, data seal of approval. I don't know if everybody knows what the data seal of approval is. It's a it's an international accreditation for um, data repositories. And one of the requirements is that you have a very clear mission about what you what you're going to do about storing data, about sharing data and what your, your open data uh, framework is. So this is our mission statement on our website. This is our current organizational structure. We have a director, then we have me, I'm the manager, um, and we have a senior research officer who looks at things like harmonizing data, meets with government data collectors to talk about um, data quality issues. Um, then we have several technical officers uh, and data, we have a technical officer and two data analysts Data analysts, all, they work with me. They Once we get the data, once we get data deposited with us, our analysts will check the data, check the quality of the data. They're looking at issues like, you know, are there pregnant men in the data set? Do we have 300 kilogram babies? So basic data quality issues. And then, because we share data online through our portal, we crowdsource a lot for other data quality input. So we work very closely with the researchers all over the world, because our data is available everywhere. Um, you don't have to be South African to get the data. And we have a lot of researchers coming back to us and, and um, letting us know about data quality issues. And what we do at best is we go back to the data producer and we work with them to produce a, a second version of the data to add metadata, to add documentation that is actually going to help in the use of the data. And um, at worst, we put up data quality notes. So if we can't improve certain aspects of the data, we, we put a data proviso or a health warning, uh, we attach that to the data. So people, so researchers still are able to use the data, but they know what they can't do with the data. So our primary focus is to save researchers' research time, which they would use on data issues. Um, and that's one of the reasons we provide extensive DDR compliant metadata with all our data sets that we share. This is, this is our ideal, um, I don't know if everybody can see that, this is our ideal infrastructure, a lot more staff as you can see, and a lot more training staff because we have a, a big mandate with one of our funders to improve the, the quantitative literacy of South African um, researchers and researchers from other parts of Africa. And so we, we want to extend our, our training uh, focus quite substantially. We, we recently got a contract with the 
national data producer, our national stats office, to, do, to train their staff, which will be very, very valuable. And we also have a, um, we work with the OECD to train data managers in other African countries. Um, I was training people in Rwanda and Botswana this year, and it's really exciting to see. So 80% of data in, in most African countries is, is produced by the national stats offices, so we thought this would be a really, really important focus for social and economic data to, to ensure that there are data managers installed in national statistics offices. We also install our open source software that we make data available through, we install that in the stats offices. And so now if you go, for instance, to the Nigerian stats office website, you can look for, you can discover, you can apply for, and you can download from their website uh, raw data from, from government surveys. So it's, it's really making progress, it's a really exciting project. Um, looking at quality assurance. Quality control, we, we try to adhere to international standards. I, I spoke about the um, CDI standard. We consult with stakeholders. Um, we participate as in this forum in, with, in issues with communities of practice. Um, we also try and I try see my, student, my staff on any training that is available. They recently did a, a lot of GIS training. I went last year or the year before to a uh, uh, a workshop on data confidentiality and disclosure control at the University of Michigan, which was really, really useful. Um, and then obviously we, uh, we have software that monitors who uses our, our data, um, how often, uh, who clicks on the links, and we have an online help desk for user feedback, which I'll talk more about now. Um, so this is, the, this is the standard that we use for the actual curation process, the, the preparing and sharing of the data. And it's based on the OAIS standard, which is an ISO standard um, for, for repositories, for um, trusted repositories. And that's just my model from that. Um, we also, this year, in fact, in October this year, received the data seal of approval, which is really exciting. And then you can see, you can see that first day here on that map. And this is a, we feel this is an accomplishment because it's, it's saying that we're doing things, you know, best practice. We also have memberships. Uh, I'm on the Codata South African Committee. Um, I don't know if anybody knows what ISIS is. It's, it's, it's a, um, an association of uh, social science data experts, um, and we've been on that. Um, we've been members for quite some time. We also have the hub membership of the ICPSR, which is a, a big data service in, in, at, based at the University of Michigan in the US. We're a member of IFTA, and of course, we're a member of the World Data System. Communities of practice, that's just some things we attended. I wrote a technical paper, which you can download. The, the, the paper is about uh, micro, micro data access in other, in African countries. Um, I just did a, a huge survey of whether you can actually get government micro data from, from various government offices. And so you can read all about it if you want to. Looking ahead, um, in 2012, we set up a secure data service. It's the first in Africa. Um, we currently have um, income, household level income data from a big government survey um, and uh, in that space. Um, only accredited researchers can use that space. They don't have to be South African. We've got a, a couple of um, US researchers working there currently. But they do have to indicate that they're competent to use the data. They understand the, the confidentiality aspects. Um, and their project is going to be really uh, useful as, a, as for science and for policies. And uh, uh, our new um, frontier is administrative data in South Africa. So we're working with, um, and I saw there's, a, there's, a, there's actually a, a presentation, I mean there's a session on open government data. So we're working with local government in, in Cape Town, um, uh, who just Given, uh, just introduce an open data policy to make their admin data available to researchers. Um, and recently, the Department, Department of Science and Technology uh, asked me to drop specifications for enlarging the national data service in South Africa. And I think that's be a fabulous idea because the more data that's out there, the easier it is to get, the better. On our on our website, you can you can uh, discover data and you can apply for it, and you will get it within maximum 24 hours. If it's a public use file, you'll get it straight away. If it's a license use file, we, we have a turnaround time of 24 hours. 
And I'm getting to be um, an activist in the sense that I think if you're talking about easy data and open data, you meet within 24 hours. You don't need wait four days and get a letter of permissions. And this is, awesome. and this is just the, the model that I created um, for the DST for um, a national data service. I won't go into too much detail because it's a poster out there, so if anybody wants to talk to me about it, I just want to say that it's depicting the uh, virtuous cycle of data reuse. So you'll see that the data is, uh, let's give one example, government data is collected, it's curated, it's made available, and then the data products that come from government, from the commercial sector or from academia, um, go back into the data service. And that way we build on science and improve policy. 